50. The topic of week two is text analytic and what we are going to cover in this presentation are the main key points to keep in mind when you prepare uh, and study the material related to text analytic. We are going to move even to the next topic given the restriction of text analytic and we are going to do short overview of assignment one which you start this week and culminate at the end of next week. This is two weeks assignment. So what is text analytics? Usually you will find a lot of material the same way they are uploaded in the classroom that uh, are named indistinctly text mining and text analytic. These are considered synonym for this presentation and we will be using them interchangeably uh, in this presentation and in the material in the classroom. So this is important key point to keep in mind. You will say why we have to focus in data 650 in text analytic. Culminating our discussion week one, we are to the consensus that most of the big data are unstructured data and the book, big portion of this data is text data and images. Since this is the case, we are going to focus heavily in what is analytics of text uh, data in many different uh, uh, variants. So we are going to start with what is the, the traditionally considered text mining, which usually refers how to extract insight and actionable knowledge from textual data and we are going to uh, do this through a different uh, known uh, text mining method in order to discover either trend, association, concept and pattern in a document containing text. Um, so um, I would like to start with this graphical presentation so we understand uh, where exactly we are going to work during these two weeks because the subject of text mining is very extensive and encompass different area of knowledge. You see very, this is very, um, um, let's say visually representing the different field which span text mining starting from uh, data mining, statistics, machine learning, databases, computational linguistics, and intersecting between these different areas, we have different areas of application and we can obtain different uh, insight from text data. For instance, uh, for this first assignment, we are going to work in the area of text mining, which is related with the algorithm you studied in data mining in 630, which were related with clustering and classification, but we are going to work with free text data. So the main uh, task to do this week will be related with text classification and text clustering. So this is represented in the intersection, the left top hand. Uh, other interesting area which we are going to work later on is very nice and very popular intersection right now which is between machine learning, computational linguistic and what is tech, and that is the natural language processing which is very important part of what is text mining. Um, natural language processing has uh, uh, become, let's say, very important topic today in the way analytic is moving because the value of, the, of text data is so important and is so important that we can understand free writing text. So natural language processing and understanding has become, after many years of research, has reached some point with very important uh, achievement and product available to help us do real task in 
enterprise. Uh, for instance, later on, we are going even to do a small portion, which is a subset of natural language processing, which is sentimental analysis. Again, we is this is an intersection of what is computational linguistic with machine learning and, uh, of course, statistic. Then we are going to apply this uh, to solve problem related with uh, sentiment, extracting sentiment from text. Um, now, there is. If you look to this diagram, I would suggest over the uh, over the the not only over this two week, but over the course, you return uh, to this diagram as soon as you don't understand where exactly is the task you are doing. Why? Because you can then understand the problem you are solving and what type of tool and resources you should be using to solve this task. For instance, one very interesting area today is concept extraction. We are going to talk about this week three and week four. And this spam uh, between computational linguistic and text mining. Um, some of our students in Data 650 have demonstrated very high interest to this concept, uh, to this topic, which is concept extraction for any subject. It could be for subject in biology, for subject in physics, for, for a subject in uh, geology. So um, concept extraction has become very important almost in any area of the knowledge. And we have several students have been doing project uh, related with the topic of concept extraction for NASA, organizing the huge amount of textual and image information which NASA possess to extract concept. Uh, any of this area which you will see information retrieval, information extraction, they are intersection of different area and each of them solve different area of interest. So every time you are going to uh, do a task related with text, you uh, feel free to return to this diagram, which very clearly represents the area where you are working and is going to help you to uh, choose the right tool uh, to, to do the work. So um, in text mining, why we are interesting uh, what we are interested uh, let's elaborate a little bit more in the importance of uh, text mining and text analytic as you know uh, information uh, starting from businesses all customer complain and comment patent file are free text this is one area in which um, huge amount of text data is available to process and extract insight from there. Uh, in financial, you know, all annual reports are a lot of free data, free text data, also very important. Court order in law. In medicine, you understand that in healthcare, all patient diagnostic report, all patient summary not only of the diagnostic, but all related summary discharge from hospital, all these are free text, which uh, is huge amount of information, not only as a volume of information, but as the complexity of free text, which need some, uh, let's say, very specific method and approaches to get insight for this data. And all the interest of many of the company today is worth value of this textual information, starting with general purposes for filtering email. Uh, today, you would say, oh, I want that at least parts of my um, email are responded automatically. And this is totally realistic. We can train a computer with the advancement of text mining to be able to respond portion of your emails automatically. Not talking about prioritizing, categorizing, 
which is a lot of help if we apply, uh, let's say, some kind of text mining and analytic. Not to talk about the importance of uh, text mining in security related field. Starting from all these blogs, social media, city, how to uh, uh, obtain insight from this textual information, monitoring all online services. This is one huge security related area and also related with crime detection in prevention. Another field, very important application of tax uh, mining is in the biomedical field, not uh, starting with, uh, let's say, concept extraction from biomedical literature. In order to do analysis, you start extracting concepts from this literature. What is going to help you? In, uh, this is going to help you in some more informed search to find, for instance, cure or to build a new vaccine, uh, you name it, everything related with biomedical. And of course, with no less in the business um, field, all these claim, insurance claim, which are free tax, any insurance company has uh, the claim in, in free form, the interview script uh, from the adjuster, all these are uh, so you, uh, with this example, you can see that the amount of free text information, which can be very usable if the businesses can extract knowledge inside from this text will be enormous. And the value actually, today, most of the company consider that the most valuable data, most of valuable data they have is the text data and mostly in free text. So, uh, this is regarding uh, to understand why it's so important that in big data, we focus in one of the uh, type of data which uh, has enormous value. When we go to the text mining itself, first thing, after you complete the required reading, I would suggest you don't stop there. You also allot some time to go to the recommended re reading. So you get ample understanding of what is the area we are doing. And after um, this, you should be able uh, to, uh, should be able to understand all this text mining terminology. I would like that in your report for assignment one, you show me exactly this, how you understood this, all this terminology, terminology and how you apply this to your assignment one. I have here summarized the most important of them and we, during the reading, pay attention to each of them and get clarity, for instance, what is the difference between corpus, word frequency, steaming, and so on and on and on. In the next two slides, I have summarized, let's say, the most important thing we have to keep in mind, uh, which is what is token and tokenizing. Why? Because you understand when you break the text, into words, you can start working text mine, mining based on words. But this is enormous work, which research has shown that is not going to give you uh, something insightful in, uh, with uh, reasonable effort. So one of the idea in all this research and development was to group, uh, to, uh, to break the text in small units uh, like phrase or larger segment, and they are pertinent for the particular analysis. And token has become input for the text mining process. So that is the main approach we are going to use in this first assignment where you are going to apply what we study about text mining and text analytics practically in this small project. Also, term 
uh, by document ma uh, matrix and very importantly generating n-gram. Why an n-gram is so important? Uh, because it's very important that you can define a combination of words which if they are used, let's say, without combining uh, as a single word, the meaning alone is different when used in combination with other words. All these approaches, which I selected here, is to help, let's say, the process of text analyzing since we are take a tackle very complex problem, we need some approaches which will help us to do this more efficiently. So all these approaches of uh, tokens and grams are to help us more effectively to deal with free text. There is much more which you will find in uh, in the um, in the reading, and I would like that I can see this in your report of assignment one that you show me. You understood that. Then, of course, we have discussion in which you can post any reaction related with this, any comment, any question, and you understand that in online environment, many of the things which you need to clarification should be discussed in the classroom where everyone goes together. So the approach which we are going to use in the beginning in text analysis is the name back of token approach because we are going to use n-gram and using some of the most important, uh, let's say, um, text mining approaches like steaming, finding word frequency, word uh, cloud, and finding some useful information from the free text. So, one of the main disadvantages, you will see others also when you start working practically and reading in more detail, is that the back token actually uh, doesn't care about the specific order of the information. It's just like the name says back of tokens. So there is no specific order and is very limited related with context. And you understand that the natural language in which we communicate, if we take phrase out of the context, they can mean totally different things. So you can find many examples when you take out of the context uh, the phrase, it means totally different things. And the approach of uh, back of token with all the limitation uh, it has, um, we need to, to react to what we can obtain but by this, uh, what we can obtain with the approach back of token and what we cannot. So, so let's say, let's honestly recognize that back of token uh, has limitation, but on the other hand, is manageable approach to, uh, uh, to obtain a lot of information for text. So we have to take in the balance what is the positive and what are the limitations. And beside the reading, you will do practical work so you better understand all these benefits you can obtain with simple R calls and all the limitations. So the main limitation, as uh, I mentioned, are the limitation uh, to imply the result in the context. In the context, why is this important? Uh, English natural language is uh, quite complicated, and I borrowed this uh, slide from IBM Watson, which has very uh, nice example about the importance, uh, the complexity of the natural language, which when we speak even, we sometimes communicating person by person, we have misunderstanding, we have to explain, we have to repeat. Just because 
things like the example I have here in the bulleted point uh, are very complex to understand and are part of our natural language. For example, how can a house can burn up as it burns down? Uh, question like this are pointing you to the difficulty that if we are not going to use back of token to to do some uh, text classification and text clustering, what you are going to do, but we go want to go beyond and to understand the language the way we as a human understand with all the complexity, we will need totally different approach. Uh, starting with the unstructured test I have in the bottom, that if leadership is an art, then surely Jack Welsh has proven himself a master painting during his tenure at G General Electric. So, if this is out of context, we don't know what is the context of this phrase, you will think about the art of painting, right? But in the context in which is uh, General Electric, we can uh, in the context, we can interpret this phrase that it is related with the tenure as a um, as a person who ran the company, uh, who was the leader in this company. Totally different of what is, uh, let's say, painter and art. Uh, the thing with context are quite complex and. Um, the research has shown that the natural language processing, we are talking about research for more than 30 years, um, we have to go to different parts, which is only group, let's say, for 20 years has researched syntaxis analysis or lexical analysis or the semantic analysis, which you will say, okay, if we are successful in the semantic analysis, what the text is saying, this is actually what we are looking for. Uh, things actually doesn't end there because as a human, we infer and inference is based on our knowledge. So the language is not just simple communication between uh, person, but uh, we use all accumulated knowledge based on the communication text to infer. And this is very, let's say, uh, human related capability, which we for years been trying to make the machine, the computer, being capable to do that. And this is actually um, one of the superior uh, human capability to make inference based on the provided information. Very simple, I'm asking you, uh, could you turn the light? And you, of course, can infer that light has to be turned because it's getting dark. Very simple thing, not talking about more complex inferences. So, sometime um, this inference goes beyond, uh, beyond the uh, beyond the actual knowledge from the document or from the uh, topic we are talking, but goes over all the uh, knowledge we have acquired. So, one of the uh, difficulty to process for natural language processing in understanding is starting with the bullet point presented in this slide, which are the synonym the word level ambiguity. We also have syntactic ambiguity and a Fourier resolution. And just given, uh, if you can think about, for example, related with these four bullet points and just try to reflect how can a computer solve this problem? And actually this has been a work for more than 30 years and already we have advancement in all this direction. Just to approach 
the way we as a room or human can interpret text relying in context. So if you would like, for example, that a computer is able to understand a phrase in the context, the computer first must understand the context in which the phrase is posted. So very simple example, let's say um, we have uh, the phrase she's hot. What that means, she's hot, in which context? If this is in context, perhaps we are talking about a child in daycare, uh, she's hot, perhaps you can assume, oh, she has a fever, fever, and this could be very close to what we are talking about in the context. But we also can interpret she's hot uh, related with uh, someone walking uh, in the tropical city during July in very hot, hot temperature with humidity, and of course it's hot and sweating. Also, we can read a text where the author says she's hot, and he refers to totally different, uh, let's say, context. Maybe he refers to that she's sexy, right? So you understand that the same phrase in different contexts can mean totally different things. And our main goal in understanding natural language processing so we can uh, have the machine doing uh, let's say similar to what we humans are doing with natural language, we have to um, to rely in all uh, in the context in which the text has to be interpre interpreted, and in the advancement to solve problem with synonym, ambiguity, anaphoria, and so on and on and on. Moreover. There are more difficulties. I have selected only the most important because actually more in deep, we are going to go in this topic in week three. I just wanted to give you hands up to this topic because as soon as you start doing uh, the text mining using what you use it in data 630 as a text as a data mining algorithm just to different data because this is what you are going to do doing this first uh, assignment of text mining is like introduction to what is to find insight in textual data which is one of the most valuable data which businesses have identified it today so the algorithm you are going to use are not different of what you did in data 630. You are going to use classification and clustering on text data. Then later on, identifying during these two weeks the limitation of this approach of text mining to find insight, we can solve, of course, a lot of uh, valuable task, task with text classification and text clustering, but there are many other tasks we as a human wish that the computer can solve for us, which is to understand the English language, um, the natural language uh, as, a, as a human does. So that is the ultimate goal. And we are approaching, let's say, uh, approaching to uh, to have a machine uh, today who can, for instance, the translation from uh, speaking English to writing text today have uh, come to the advancement very acceptable to us as a user. And we are me moving, moving also in other di direction which are related with understanding uh, text really um, uh, close to the human, close to the human in certain area. Of course, the advancement are possible not only based on the research done for many years, but also in the advancement of the technology which provides us a high performance multi-cluster which can run much faster 
uh, and process a uh, huge amount of data which free text can end up in enormous amount of data. So these are uh, some of the issues related with natural language processing. Uh, of course, you would wonder, wonder what type of algorithm are in the national, uh, natural language processing. They are three main, let's say, three main approaches, which is the rule-based, statistical, and hybrid. Um, in this class, we are going to rely in what already has been done in this direction. And as a data analyst, data scientist, we are going to use this algorithm to solve problem. So we are not going to dig and try to, uh, let's say, improve the algorithm itself. We are going to use them wisely in order to obtain, uh, let's say, um, effective analytic which can give value to the uh, to the problem we are solving so we are here in the application level of this approach to do uh, natural language processing the most important is you think in the application that is the area we are concentrating and as a student in data analytics, it has been up to now, and it will be until the end of the program. You can choose the data you will be working with. Uh, and the data you will be working with will direct you to different application area. Maybe you are going to choose to work in the application area in you are employed right now, or you are going to work in other areas of interest which you are interested to introduce yourself. So uh, there is almost no area in our in our life where uh, text information is not desirable to obtain some insight from text uh, from text data. So you name it here in in this slide from. Um, uh, retail, healthcare, banking, financial, ins insurance claim, so on and on and on. So I would like to summarize what you are going to do in this assignment number one. The assignment number one is to do text analytic in text of your choice, but before proceed to do to that, you will have uh, something which is uh, IHRC, uh, which is showing you the main approach we are going to use for this first assignment. So the assignment will consist in two parts, in which uh, you have first to do uh, the part one, which is like training. IHRC is preparing you for what you are do going to do in the second part. And after you read did part one, you can proceed to what you are going to do in part two, where you will apply your knowledge and you, I expect you to go beyond what was shown in part one. So very important that you write a report in your experimental des uh, design and finding the same way you've been doing during all uh, assignment in this program, nothing different. The only difference here is the requirement that uh, part one, after you complete, there are um, a number of questions which you should answer in your word and in the order they are giving. And what I expect submitted is a Word document or PDF, whatever are your preferences, which compre comprise both parts together. Part two is your usual uh, analytic report you do, okay? Uh, you describe the problem you are going to solve, you describe the method you are going to use, uh, you do, um, and the method should be Beyond the example in the walkthrough, I very would like that you be creative and very important is the presentation, the interpretation, and the analysis of your finding. 
So, uh, in addition to this, like any of this report, you have to um, discuss also the study limitation and do proposal for future study. So, very important that you follow the instruction, ask question if you don't understand something, and make sure you have read all the instruction before proceeding uh, uh, with preparing the report so you don't have to go back and forth and make sure that your deliverable are bought in the assignment folder. So what is required for part two, you have to submit not only the text, uh, the report in the text document, but you have to submit also the R script related with part two. So your submission is going to be with two files. So I would like to point your attention to the following. Uh, the assignment folder, the way it is set, if you click submit, it's not permitting you to submit second time. So make sure you plot all the bot file before you hit submitting because otherwise we are going to have to fix uh, this issue manually. So with no more, I look forward for um, excellent performance this week too and uh, completing all the reading asking whatever is not clear in class discussion. They are also area where you can post question related with the assignment and looking forward for excellent assignment number one for report, which actually go above and beyond the walkthrough we are doing.